Hi there, boys and girls, and welcome back to Conquering Math, where it all adds up. Today we will be discussing the independent practice solutions to the algebraic equations with two variables lesson. Remember that you can pause and rewind this video as necessary to help you understand the problems. Let's dive on in. Independent practice number one. Determine if the ordered pair is a solution to the equation. Part A. Y equals X over 3 when X is 15 and Y is 4. Part B. 6X equals Y minus 7 when X is 4 and Y is 31. Now is a good time to pause this video and work on this problem if you have not done so already. In order to determine if the ordered pair is a solution to the equation, we need to substitute the x and y values into the equation to see if it is true. So for part a, we have 4 on the left hand side and 15 over 3 on the right hand side. 15 over 3 is 5. We know that 4 does not equal 5, so 15, 4 is not a solution to y equals x over 3 because it does not make the equation true. Now let's take a look at part b. We'll substitute 4 in for x and 31 in for y. So on the left hand side we have 6 times 4, and on the right hand side we have 31 minus 7. In this case, 6 times 4 equals 24, and 31 minus 7 also equals 24. So we know that 4, 31 is a solution to 6x equals y minus 7 because it makes the equation true. Independent practice number 2. The equation y equals 12x gives the number of slices y that you will get out of x pizzas. Part A. Identify the independent and dependent variables in this equation. Part B. How many slices will you have if you order 5 pizzas? Now is a good time to pause this video and work on this problem if you have not done so already. So for part A, we need to take a look at the independent and dependent variables of the equation. We know that the number of slices, which is y, depends on the number of pizzas that you order, which is x. So the number of pizzas is the independent variable, and the number of slices is the dependent variable. Part B. How many slices will you have if you order 5 pizzas? In this case, we will use the number 5 to substitute in for x in the equation. So we have y equals 12x, which becomes y equals 12 times 5. 12 times 5 is 60, so we know that you will have 60 slices if you order 5 pizzas. Independent practice number 3. After a recent purchase, Amaya had $15 left in her bank account. She decided to save $5 per week to replenish the account. Write an equation that represents the savings, S, in Amaya's bank account after saving for W weeks. Now is a good time to pause this video and work on this problem if you have not done so already. The first thing that we need to do is to create a plan for writing our equation. We know that Amaya's savings equals the savings per week times the number of weeks plus the starting amount, which was $15. Now we can identify our variables. S is Amaya's savings and W is the weeks that she spent saving. So now we can write our equation. S equals 5W plus 15. Independent practice number 4. Using the equation you created in independent practice number 3, create a graph that models the amount of money in Amaya's account after she has saved for W weeks. Now is a good time to pause this video and work on this problem if you have not done so already. In order to help us solve this problem, we can create a table to find the ordered pairs and then graph each pair. Your table should look like this. On the left hand side you have the number of weeks, and then in the next column you have the equation with weeks substituted in, and these equations help you find the savings which go in the third column, and then the ordered pair which is WS in the fourth column. After one week, Amaya has saved $20. After two weeks, she's saved $25, three weeks, she has $30, and after four weeks, she has $35. Now we can graph this on a coordinate grid. 
and you'll notice that the line is increasing as you move to the right. She started with $15 after zero weeks and increased by $5 each week after that. Remember that if she keeps saving, this line will keep going up, so we put an arrow on the end to indicate this. Remember that you can pause and rewind this video as many times as necessary until you understand the process. Thanks for watching this episode of Conquering Math, where it all adds up. I'll see you next time.